it's really good to have open access in the sense that it means that the readership of your work is is large and it can be anywhere and it, and it doesn't matter if you don't have money as long as you have access to the internet then you can you can get access to that research which which is a fabulous way of going the biggest benefit of open access publishing um, I think uh, the the biggest thing is that you get exposed to the world and the world gets to see what you've got to offer and um, you get quick um, exposure to potential collaborators and people who want to learn from your work. I guess the most benefit of open access is the accessibility for people. When we work in an institution like a university, we have access to databases and libraries, but without those um, databases, particularly people outside of that area, they don't have the access. So when people publish in open access, then it's a much broader readership. It's wider, more widely available. We need a, a roadmap to move towards open access, both of data and other research resources. And this is absolutely essential to fulfil our moral and ethical obligations to the communities we work with. Most research is funded by taxpayer dollars. We also have an obligation uh, to those funding agencies to make our research as widely available as possible. And I use it in combination with academic professional articles in the conversation and with other social media to increase the spread. Now, of course, the people who are looking at social media or are reading articles in journalism don't have the library access that you would have at a, an institution to be able to see these articles. So if they're published openly, they can access them, they can talk about them, they can share them, and that increases your public profile as a researcher. This is especially important if you're an early career researcher or a PhD student. I also understand that it's really important for, say, government funding bodies if they want to have the research out there in the public domain for everybody to get access to, then open access looks like a really good thing. It's very handy if you're doing particularly reviews of any kind to uh, have easy and ready access to the materials that are online. And with open access, it's a matter of clicking a few buttons, downloading it into your reference manager and the PDF if you want it, and it's in your hands. It also means you don't have to chop down trees to print things and um, you've got a collection of material that lasts as long as you want to keep it. I really encourage PhD candidates and early career researchers to, as much as possible, to take advantage of open access publishing because, because of that wider readership they get more exposure of their research, they get their name out there, they get people to know who they are and what they're doing, which leads to all sorts of benefits and partnerships and collaborations. I guess the biggest obstacle to open access publishing is the cost for most people and particularly for PhD candidates that's quite a big cost for them. So if I could say anything that I would like to see improved in open access it would be that it becomes much more widely available which hopefully will eventually bring the cost down and make it more accessible to people. Early career researchers need to be need to have their work work on show, they need to showcase it and they also need to form collaborations because collaborations are what underpins a research career. You can't just do it all by yourself. Having people around the world able to access your material quickly and readily builds up collaborations that then can be used um, as the platform for applying for research funding, which is very competitive. Open journals can be very high quality. And so you can pick something which is either a very old established journal, some of these have got very high rankings, but are open, open access because that's how they started. Or you could try something more recent, things like Sage Open, which have an enormous number of publications in them. One of the things that I do as part of my work here at JCU is I edit this journal called Ed, uh, Asia Pacific Viewpoint. It's a, it's a journal that has a long history in the region and mostly the articles that get published are about um, Southeast Asia and the Pacific with a kind of development studies angle. Now one of the things about the journal is that it's not affordable to a lot of um, universities in the region. So uh, open access provides a really important opportunity for people in the region to read articles that are being written about their country. 
In many fields, the research that is produced is vital for community action plans in health and cultural heritage restoration works, environmental restoration and so on. So if these research results are tied up behind paywalls indefinitely, it delays the value of those results getting back to the communities of interest to support their work and support them making um, a better environment for them to live in.